All right, everybody, welcome back to the YouTube. Today, we're actually trying to reshoot some stuff because, man, I've got a story. So, starting out nice and easy, this is my Jetta. I bought this car with the intention of fixing it up a little bit, as I do, and making it kind of spiffy, like some Audi wheels and some suspension and blah, blah, blah. But long story short, I bought this car and started it, and when I started it and ran it, I realized that it was leaking oil. And as you can see, I have disassembled the side of the engine all the way down to pulling the front main structure off, and let me go show you why. So I, I thought it was just going to be a front main seal, which would have been easy enough, but no, it actually ended up being way worse than that. So, this right here is the new cover. As you can see, front main structure. This goes to the oil pan here, you know, handful of bolts right through here, blah, blah, blah. Cleaned off that surface, cleaned off this surface where it, ma where it mates to the block. Um, we'll get to that later, but this one. Look at that. So I've removed the bolt that was wedged in there but this here bolt one of the previous owners apparently tried to do a time bone water pump and at some point or another oh, of course at some point or another they dropped this bolt down inside of the timing cover and either they didn't know or didn't think it would be a problem but it was a real problem as you can see both of the tensioners this one's the one that came off, obviously, because the seal is ruptured now, but think about it, there was a lot of debris and shrapnel going around underneath of that cover, so it, this is acceptable for, for what it is, but you flip it over, and yeah, there's like some residual grease and stuff from, from it being mounted on a dirty engine, but again, <coughs> excuse me, not terrible, not crazy, like, everything... No noise, no play, no wobble, like, Gucci, right? And you saw, you, you see this. This is also a brand new lower crank gear for the 8 valve. Let me see where, where did I put the other, right here. Okay. That bolt did this. It got wedged in there somehow up against the pulley, or this gear, and the the gear kind of gave way and the pulley I mean not the pulley but the the bolt into the into the case that case kind of gave way and that's where that bolt got wedged in there and so instead of it being the actual front main seal that was leaking it was this hole was just allowing the sling from the crankshaft to just just propel itself almost with force out of out of the bottom end of the engine so ordered the new part Everything's greasy and dirty and nasty and filthy, and it is what it is. I apologize. All that stuff will get cleaned up real good before I put it in the engine, I think. Um, I'll probably do that in between videos and whatnot, but basically the problem I have now is that when I pulled this piece off yesterday, and I intended to film me pulling it off, and honestly, once you remove the handful of bolts, and I'll probably tie in some of that footage from yesterday into it so that you can see where the bolts were, but the whole idea here is that when I pulled this off, that chunk that's missing, unfortunately, is inside of the oil pan somewhere. Now, luckily, I know this engine runs smoothly. It doesn't knock, it doesn't rattle, it doesn't tap. The engine itself is still sound. Even the timing chain, not timing chain, but even the, even the, even the chain for the oil pump, even that looks nice and good. The, well, it, it looks good. Um, the guide for it looks good. Everything looks all right. I'm, I'm very happy with all of that. Thankfully, that piece of aluminum seems to have just gone down into the bottom of the pan. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to ultimately remove the pan today, here in a little bit. Um, I'm just kind of deciding how I want to brace the engine up because I've, I've also got the, the motor mount removed because, <laughs> because I'm doing timing. So I, I can't just take the jack stand out from underneath of the, the skid plate. So... 
I gotta figure something out, but I just basically wanted to restart this video and show everybody while this stuff was in my hands, like, kind of what happened. Like, this is what happens when you drop bolts down inside of places where they have moving parts. Like, this crankshaft pulley, or gear, I'm sorry I keep calling it a pulley, but this gear, it's tough. Like, you can, you can see, like, it's not crazy, crazy huge or heavy, but it's definitely solid. And I mean, you saw the chunk that was missing from it. It was pretty, pretty damn severe. So here we are. This is what happens. If you at any point in time think that you may have dropped a bolt down inside of anything that moves, unless it is just absolutely unrealistic for you to do the job to pull it back apart or pull it apart, don't start the car. Get someone that can do it to help you. Do whatever you can to avoid this. Because now, what what was a car that had a new timing belt, water pump, tensioner, and all this other stuff, now it's a car that's broken down, and I'm having to fix and replace all of this stuff all over again. So, for your future aggravation levels, just account for all of your hardware. Make sure that everything is doing exactly what it's supposed to do all bolts are where they're supposed to be and if you don't know where they are that's fine go ahead and just you know set them aside don't let them fall into the engine but i'll be back when i get up underneath of the car after i figure out the mount situation all right so we're back i've actually gone through and i've removed all of the 10 millimeter pan bolts all the way around of course i had the front main cover off that end so those bolts aren't up there there's three bolts up inside of there, and then there's these three, and then right inside of that mount, like over top of it, up inside of here, those are 16 millimeters. Now, hopefully, I can sit this back here, just a, just a touch. Yeah, it's all right. We're gonna try and pry the, pry the pan off a little bit. So that one's out. Seems like we're still holding on one over here. Oh, there it is. Welcome back. We definitely have that chunk. So I'm really glad I pulled all that apart to find that. Because this could have been catastrophic for the next owner. Like, all the windage tray being intact looks good. That's nice. The pump, the actual pickup, doesn't look clogged or anything. That looks pretty damn good, I'll say. So I'll take that. But yeah, there's definitely some shit in there. Something was unhappy at some point with that chunk. So we're going to address that because, I mean, that's a lot of damage. That's a, that's a big chunk. But it is what it is. We'll come back when I figure some stuff out. Thanks, everybody. All right, so we're back with our second day of recording of this car it's been a little while uh some things have happened off camera um i found some more broken stuff uh if you know anything about a mark 4 8 valve any of them they have that their what do you call it uh chain driven oil pump so if you see that little round spot right in the middle of the screen there's supposed to be a guide that goes there this guide specifically and as you can see it is missing a good piece so now oh, I have a new one 
and we can start finally putting this thing back together. Uh, I do still have to swap the water pump out. That shouldn't take but a second, but ideally, I just wanted to point out that this thing sits down there in a funky way, but let's see if I can grab y'all. Yep. All right. So, see that hole I was talking about, that big silver spot, that's where the washer was. Now, this is a Euro part, and I forgot to mention. Okay. Looking at this one, this is how it came apart. Minus the fact that it's broken. You see the section where my thumb is is just missing, so it wasn't putting tension on anything anymore. But this is sitting flat up against the block. You look at the new Euro parts one, and you see it's got a nut on it. I do not believe that nut is supposed to be there. So if you buy this part from Euro Parts, be sure to pull this nut off. Now, I get to fight. I'm trying to... Come on, booger. There we go. Definitely should have had it further along before I started recording, but I was like, nah, we're going to do this realsies. Now that's out of the way, you see there's that little spring, that little hook. Alright, okay. So this is going to go in here like this. So you want to get that up in there, I believe, some kind of way. Yeah, there it is. You want to put it in like this, get that little screw started, bolt, whatever. Make sure that you've got it in that that section. Of course, it's in front of the chain right now, but I'm trying to get it in far enough so that this piece here likes to stick, and then I'm just going to bend it down. Oh, it popped out. So I just don't have far enough in. I'll keep on going a little bit further. You don't want to go too far because eventually the chain will start to catch it, but... Yeah, I just got some tightness to it. Ah, damn it. Okay. Just gotta keep fighting it. It is unnecessarily hard. Oh, goodness. Okay, there we go. You just want to keep going. Now you see, that's got nice amounts of tension on it. Oh, where to put it? Oh, there it goes. My handy dandy quarter inch. Because I don't really... Don't really want to underdo this, but you don't want to overdo it either. It's a 10 millimeter bolt, so there's not going to be a whole lot of torque on it. But when I took it off, it was surprisingly a large amount of torque, it felt like. So we're going to get it nice and snug. Okay, so that's got a little bit of give. All right, so that right there, I recommend looking up the torque spec for it, but I felt it coming apart and I feel like I've kind of got it back where it wants to be. So I'm okay with it. <clears throat> but basically I put it snug to where it was just under, you know, hand tight. And then I did hand tight plus like a solid quarter turn plus like an eighth of a turn. So that should be good. Um, I'm going to put some oil on this, just dribble it across the top so that it goes down inside of the chain so that it's not going to be a, a dry chain on fire up, but this should work great. All right, now up top, again, I'm going to need my 10 millimeter. Uh, let's get this up off the ground just, just for good measure. We're going to come down here to the water pump. 
Now, if you're familiar with Mark III's, you'll know doing a water pump is kind of a pain in the ass because on Mark III, they're not timing belt driven, but they, they, part of it is behind the timing belt if you don't want to take the entire front housing off. But Mark IV, they simplified all that for us and they just block mounted it in this very easy to pull place once you've gotten everything apart. It's these, this bolt here, this bolt here, uh, I don't know if I can get you down far enough, and then you see that bottom bolt somewhere, right, right about here, wherever the socket's shaking. But yeah, that's loose. Damn, that one's tight. Okay, so we're gonna get an extension. Tristan over here, rebuilding a carb on one of my doofy ass four wheelers. Yee! Yee! No wonder that bitch didn't wanna run. God damn! <laughs> Right, Holy shit, that looked like a 40-year-old whore's snatch who ain't never showered and sat in the fucking sun to suntan. Golly dig. Oh, that actually hurts my soul a little bit to know that that sat like that for so long. By the way, Elliot, if you ever watch this video, I'll make sure to leave this in here for you. Uh, we're working on the little, the little Kawasaki buddy. <coughs> well, Tristan's working on it. I'm, I'm working on this thing. Trying my damnedest not to uh, break stuff. Uh, there we go. I was about to say, this stuff does have to be tight, but the cooling system, the cap itself should have a pressure release at like 16 PSI, so ideally it really shouldn't be all that much necessary torque. Like, ideally, I would say 16 PSI in the grand scheme of things considering how much torque a lot of bolts undergo further around different parts of the drive drivetrain I would say this is this is like peas and carrots like I don't know what the, the technical spec is but it's probably like 13 to 18 foot pounds for this that felt like it was a solid 40 maybe 42 35 somewhere in there I'm just gonna keep saying numbers like I know what I'm talking about Doop 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 Move this plate out of the way. I think I think the bolt that started this whole job came from this hole, because I don't remember pulling it. And it's an O-ring in here, so it's just kind of a matter of snapping it out of there, popping it up. Big boy. Let's go. Boop a doop a doop. All right. That came out pretty good. Yeah. And just kind of looking at it really doesn't look that bad i mean it's a little grody i suppose just because it's been on an engine that's been leaking oil but the impeller itself looks good and it doesn't look like this pulley got ate up by that bolt at all which the cam gears i think i stated earlier in a different video also isn't having a major problem so that's cool um but i have a new one so new one Cleaner, Stealing rag. Do what you need to do with it, man. Make sure to wipe everything down as good as you can. Make sure there's no debris.
Alright, so a lot of people do this differently, but I like to put my bolts in first and get everything nice and lined up where it's supposed to be with the pump into the block in the direction it needs to be facing or turned or clocked or however you want to refer to it. But basically, I'm going to walk the O-ring in a little at a time. This is crunch time when you're doing a water pump. If there's even just the slightest bit of uneven pressure on this thing, you better believe it's going to cut that O-ring. And then you're going to have done all of this just to pull it back apart. So right now is the time where a little bit of caution and a little bit of patience comes in real strong. That's right. I dropped that one bolt. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I know it fell this way. Oh no. Oh no. There it is. I bet y'all saw it and I didn't see it. <sighs> Make sure that any dirt you get on it, you get rid of. But yeah, we're going to walk this O-ring in so that we don't get it cocked in any kind of a weird way so that it ends up tearing. We don't want... I'm trying to sell this car. So I want this car to last and hold up nice and strong and be what I tell this kid it's gonna be so naturally if you're driving a car you kinda want that level of reliability so it is certainly worth taking the time to do this a little at a time no shortcuts kids, no shortcuts, kids. all these wasps are like super pissed off at me do I have what? Got a good can of brake clearance? No. Oh, that tip's been broke. That happened a while ago. That can's like five months old. Little bit at a time, little bit at a time. Amazingly, for one time in my life, I kind of sort of ran out of stuff to talk about because this is not as hard to explain as I was expecting. Everybody, by this point, if you're watching this video, if you're watching this for a timing belt video, I'm sorry, because it's not, but kind of is. But if you're watching this for educational purposes, like, it's not very informative. I, I, I wasn't prepared for torque specs or anything. I wasn't playing any of them games. I'm just doing everything based on how I would normally do it for my car and, you know. What works for me may not work for you. So, do as I say, not as I do. Look up your torque specs proper. Like proper, proper. Always takes so long. There we go. Well, that's a real shame. I just realized I left that stupid cover plate off. Alrighty. Stupid is it, stupid does. Yes, it is. Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that's the new water pump in. All right, so this is the rear main cover. This is where that bolt went through. I showed you this earlier. Now it's time to put it on. So here we go. I like to just kind of get as much on there as I feel I'm gonna need to get a good smear. So I don't like leaving it like this, of course, you know, and I don't mean sloppy like this. I don't, I mean, I don't like doing the lines of the thick goop all around the holes and then trying to smooth it out as it bolts on. I actually like to smear the stuff in and get a nice even layer. Yeah, it's a little messy. You get it on your fingers, but it is what it is. This stuff, if you do it right, should hold and should hold fantastically like it's supposed to. It's not supposed to fill up, you know, a quarter eighth inch of a gap you know if you've got that kind of a gap you've got much 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 larger problems make sure to get any of the chunky bits out that don't want to be super duper cooperative try not to leave too much on the inside see I smudged some but you know just a good even smear a nice coating so that you know it's there but it's not crazy amounts. You don't need it oozing out into the engine. That's potentially never gonna hurt anything, but also not something that I personally would want floating around inside of things that aren't supposed to have anything but oil in there. But we're gonna let that sit for just a couple of seconds. You know, two minutes maybe, while I wipe my hand off. Get the stuff back off of me. Uh, you want to let it get a little tacky so that it doesn't ooze super duper hard, but you don't want to wait terribly long either. You know, if once it starts to dry, it doesn't smush like it should. And so we are going to line the rest of this up so that we can get it in there good. As you can see, it's only a handful of bolts. If you watched last time, I think I've got footage of taking it apart, but it's like five bolts. It's uh, two locator pins. That's what these far bottom holes right here are, that shiny silver one, and then this one that's pretty gooped up. Hopefully with it having a new rear main and a new guide and new timing belt, none of this will have to come back apart for years, so that little bit right there won't be that big a deal. They'll fight with that years from now. But one, two, three, four, five... Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need one more bolt. But one of these, I don't remember, does something funny. So we'll get to it. But, you know, all in a day's work. You just want to make sure that you're as thorough as you can be. You don't want to, you don't want to be in here trying to half-ass a bunch of stuff and be quick and then wind up costing yourself way more work in the long run than what it was ever worth to begin with. Like, trust me, I am the king of rework. Alright, so as you'll notice, the last thing you should have just seen was this with blue RTV on it, which you can see it has been wiped back off. Uh, what can I say? Uh, I went to grab it to push it onto the pegs, the little locator dowels that go right here and here at the bottoms. Uh, that was... I reached for it and knocked it down and then ended up having dirt and gravel and all kinds of nasty stuff in the gasket surface. So I'm back with some red RTV and we're going to try this again. But I will be back since I already showed you how to goop it all on. I'm going to I'm going to just you know cut away from this real quick and then come back after I'm ready to sit it on the engine. All right, so we're back and I've got it gooped on there. <clears throat> So I'm gonna go ahead and, without the seal, try to lay this into the engine and hopefully do this in a way that you guys can see it. Now I've gone ahead and, you know, scraped and brushed and got as much of that old RTV off as I am worried about, but basically you just wanna, nice and easy, don't smudge it anywhere if you can help it. Get it lined up and then press it on just like that and then you're just gonna want to start putting your bolts in 
get all of them started by hand first to make sure that they're nice and in the threads the way they're supposed to be and not going to cross thread. Of course, I did something with the with the bolts, so we're going to have to go. Oh boy. Okay. So I believe it was these black ones here. I already got one in, so that's three and four. Now these had some have been soaking in gas to just kind of clean them off a little bit. But as you can see, I've got the I've got the first bolt in right here. Well, you know, poking at stuff when you're looking through the cameras is never very accurate. two again you just like I said you want to make sure that you kind of get it on there in such a way that you can confidently say that you don't have to worry about cross threading definitely do not want to cross thread this if it breaks off it's gonna break off in the block and that's no bueno we're going to try and avoid that. There's one hidden way over here. I think I actually miscounted and we're going to need one more bolt. Ugh. One more. One more. One more. Okay. And then we're going to need... Yeah, let's just go ahead and go with this 10 mil. This is, this is, this is going to work fine. Of course, my beautiful camera camera work all right so yeah as you can see in the camera I miscounted and missed it I missed the mark pretty hard to the top one here wrong way you don't need to go super tight does not need to be crazy tight but I'm starting at the top and working my way down to the bottom because I want to push everything towards the bottom so that it'll excrete out the bottom and we'll go ahead and lock in and I'll be able to trim the bottom nice and flush once it sets after a little while and then I'll be able to put the oil pan back on and once the oil pan's on, I can do the timing, and we can finally get this engine tightened up to a point to where we can start it and run it. Ah, there we go. Now we're going to let that sit for a little while and let the RTV cure in. We don't really want to go banging the seal into it just yet, just because you might, might not disturb anything, but you might disturb the RTV. And if you notice, I have a little... Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit. Oh, that's too much. There we go. All right, so if you look, I have a little bead of silicone popping out. And it's not it's not excessively globby. So that little itty-bitty line is probably also present on the inside. And as long as I give this enough time to cure and it, and it dries to a glue like it's supposed to or dries to a rubber, whatever it is, silicone, blah, blah, blah. Once it once it dries a bit, it'll uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll hold on strong on the inside, regardless of how much oil splashes on it. And then, uh, yeah, after this cures for like an hour, we'll come back and we'll put the seal in, and then we'll let the seal sit for a bit, and then we'll go ahead and lop in some parts and get this timing set back up. And I, I tell you, I think I think it's going to be pretty nice once it's done. You know, I put a lot into this. And like I said, I didn't expect to do all this extra filming and stuff on it, but it turned into such a monster that here we are. But I'll be back in a little bit to finish out how to do this front main. All right, bye. All right, so we're back. I've got the, re the front main here, and I've greased it on the outside with just a little bit of grease just to, you know, get it kind of juicy. Same thing for the inside, and I noticed if you if you see it, you can tell that the part I'm holding is smaller in diameter than the part I'm not holding on the other side of the seal, which 
funny enough, actually mates up almost perfectly to the to the lip that this is going to ride on. So that should be easy enough to just line it up and squeeze it in. And I don't have any fancy tools to push a seal in, so I'm going to use this here 36 millimeter, which, from the look of it to me, I mean, that's pretty swag to me. So let's take this over to the car. This should be fairly straightforward. You just get it lined up, you know, and then it should be push it in. Oh, I messed that up a little bit, but that's okay. Popping down this end might bring it back around. Or I might have to do all this all over again. Yeah, that might be okay. But anyway, that's basically how you install the seal. I'm actually going to take me a little itty bitty hammer. And I'm going to tap that just a touch. Just to kind of even it the rest of the way out. Maybe I can position this. Hey, that looks alright. Alright, let's see if we can fix the conundrum I put no it looks like I might have screwed this up go figure Yep, I pushed it in too far. Oh. Let me tell you the joys of cars. Alright, we'll be back later. This is the end of part one. I'll fix this off camera because it's going to be me taking it all back apart, pushing the seal back out, and then just trying to get it to set in there right. Part two, we're going to talk about reassembling the timing components, putting it into time of course there's a helicopter anyway if you liked what you saw in this video and you want to see more of the series don't forget to subscribe to the channel there's going to be lots more to come and it's not going to be just this car i'll be working on this one which already has an upload so there's that and then there's all those over there and then there's more behind the barn that you can't see but this is this is going to be the end of part one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. All right, guys. Well, don't forget to comment below what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see. There is some more stuff coming on this. Like I said, I'm going to fix that off camera and, you know, turn it around. But whatever. Thanks, guys. Hopefully, everybody's doing well. Hopefully, everybody had a nice, safe July 4th. But until next time, so long. All right, so I fixed it off camera. And I've now got the gear in there. So I gotta give the seal. It said four hours. I have to give the seal four hours before it can be, before I can twist on the crank. They want the seal itself. Oh no, I'm blocking so much of the. They want the seal itself to actually set and stretch and adapt to the to the crank before you go twisting on it. So I'm gonna go inside, edit up part one of this get it put together in some kind of way that makes some kind of sense and uh i'll be back outside in a few hours to start on part two which will be assembling the timing tightening down that crank gear a couple other odds and ends uh but largely timing and then we'll have some suspension shenanigans after that so this is the official this is the official uh we're we're done with part one so, we're done with part one. Subscribe, comment, let me know what you like. Uh, come over to my Instagram and talk to me personally. I'm actually open to DMs and stuff. I don't really mind. Uh, I don't really mind talking to people, answering questions. So, give me a holler. Thanks, guys. Bye.